Now we'll do it. This is, you realize I'm only still doing this because I mentioned it in my speech. And you've got to shut up! Bloody <laughs> hell. Okay, as you will remember, this is the story which concerns two tribes. And one tribe is the... Hang on. <laughs> one tribe is the... You get that, then? Yeah. Right. And the other tribe, you know who the other tribe is? It's the... So there are two tribes, and one's called the tribe, and the other's called the... What? Come on! You can't hear it, can you? Yeah. And then... And then... People are quiet, decent, law-abiding, the liberals, folk, quite like the liberal Democrats. Unfortunately, and they live at the bottom of the valley, and it's a tribe of, I don't know, sort of tribe of Norman lands, really. And so they live decent lives, and they obey the laws, and they farm their farmland, and they look after their wives, and they're jolly nice folk. The problem is, the so you can't do it with this. The problem is that we live on the valley. <laughs> and every Thursday night after a few beers, they say, tell you what guys, let's have a war party and go out and rape and pillage them from the valley. So they get together. And they go down the valley and they capture food and they take a back from the encampment and they rape and pillage them there. And after a while, there aren't many left. A bit like the Liberal Democrats, really. <laughs> and um, so eventually they get pretty fed up with them coming up every week, capturing them, taking them back from the encampment. And there aren't many left. And so they hold a meeting. Quite like the Liberal Democrats, really. <laughs> and they have a long debate. Sort of almost as long as the Federal Policy Committee. <laughs> Yay! And they don't come to any conclusion just exactly the same as the Federal Policy Committee. <laughs> Until one little, one little braver and wiser than the others, sort of, I don't know, David Lawrence perhaps, <laughs> stands up and says, Fellow, I have got an answer to the cup problem because the, the come down every day, take a few prisoner, take a back from the and there aren't many of us left. So what we want to do, I think, is go and ask the result. <laughs> and the result who lives up the valley is a wiser man and he will have the problem until the answer to the problem of coming down for and can and taking back and coming and the wrong in his death. And the wisdom will know the answer to this. It's one of those speeches that go round and round in circles. A bit like Simon Hughes. Really. Um, except it hasn't got down to 15th million or something. So, so they take a vote. Because being liberal Democrats, you can't do anything about taking a vote. So they go round the room. And they all agree that a little who had suggested that, that the problem of the, should be solved by going to see the Liverpool at the valley, he would be the person who goes and asks the Liverpool that he can solve the problem of coming down from the gap and the army and so on. So he journeys two or three days and nights through the mountains and eventually he comes to a mountain with a cave and a stone rolled across the front. And there's John. God, you're paying attention. <laughs> Do you know, I get more attention on this than any speech I've ever made. <laughs> so, so, anyway, so anyway, here's the story. It's gone up the valley to see the little boy, to ask him about the problem, and he's outside, and as John comes up, the stone 
rolls magically to one side. And a, a long, well, a sort of not very long, little, quite round, quite squat, very hairy man comes out, quite like David Heath, really. <laughs> and, um, and he said, I am the Wizard of Oz, and who are you? So the little says, Go to the I know from down the valley, and we've got a real problem with it. We come down every week, captured you, taking you back to the encampment of the Lama Keeper's Desk, and we thought that you were the Wizard of Oz, so the problem for us. And the Wizard of Oz said, Well, well, as it happens, just the day before yesterday, I invented the pill of shh. So I, if you put, you're believing this, aren't you? You really think this is true, right? Yes. Uh, by the way, it's about as accurate as our manifesto this day. Right? <laughs> so, um, you know, so the little who went out to see the woods carried the pillar that the wind whistles gave them. No, sorry, I asked you. So uh, he carried the pillar that the wizard had given the, to solve the problem. I mean, it is about as likely as trying to solve the deficit if you think about it. And anyway, so he carries the pillar that he given him to solve the problem back down to the encampment. And then it was Friday morning. And um, when the arrived back, Carrying the pillars which we give them back to the encampment. They just been out the for a bit of night on the piss actually and they were feeling pretty lousy. You know what it's like tomorrow morning, I promise you. <laughs> uh, and so they form a um, hang on. It's not going on too long, is it? No, uh, so the uh, the little girl have another meeting up, there are even fewer of left at the stage, quite like after the European elections, I think. <laughs> uh, anyway, so they gather the, together, and of course they have a meeting with a long debate. What shall we do, fellow, with the pillars of the given us to solve the problem? And they decide to form a war party. And the following day they carry the pillar. Do pay attention to them. They carry the pill of shh to the them up above stream, upstream of the encampment. And as dawn breaks the following morning, the flaps on the tents are pushed to one side and the crawl out trying to get to the water supply. So the pull put the pill of shh the She's an MEP and she's still listening to the had given them to solve the problem was opposite the just as they drank the water. Unfortunately, the wizard of them had done the calculations wrong and it didn't kill the stone dead. It diminished it in size. So now the the how was it? So now the um, so now the are about this size. Because of what the village would have given them a gun to them. And now they can gather all of them up and they put them in a the bottle. So here's the bottle. And they gather the bottle in like the little. The little. The little. Gather all of them together. And they put them in a the bottle. And there's so many in there. And they're bursting out the top of the bottle. And they're standing around the outside. But the pressure in the bottle is pushing it out. So they get the biggest and the fattest they can find and put them on top. So you have a bottle full of and a, on top. Got that? Bottle full of and a, on top. Which explains to this day why you open a bottle of beer and it goes. That's it. Got it.